In this video, we will explore how incredible the number pi truly is and dive into the concept of infinity. We'll also conduct an experiment and I'll teach you how to memorize the first 14 digits of pi. By watching this video until the very end, you might change your perspective on life and expand your horizons. So, without wasting any more time, let's begin. One, mathematics is the language of nature. Two, everything around us can be represented and understood through numbers. Three, if you graph the numbers of any system, patterns emerge. Therefore, there are patterns everywhere in nature. Pi is a number, but not just any number. It's the superstar of the mathematical world. Pi represents the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. In simpler terms, if your diameter in this world is one, then your circumference is pi. When you look at pi, you can see both the simplicity of a circle and the maddening complexity of an infinite sequence of numbers. It's so famous that March 14th is celebrated as Pi Day all over the world. But what makes this number so special? Is it just because it's also Albert Einstein's birthday? And where does this number show up outside of math class? What is it used for in real life? What is any of this good for and uh, when would we ever use it? Here's the thing, Pi is an irrational number, which means there's no apparent pattern in its decimal places. Or, if there is one, we haven't discovered it yet. There are infinite digits after the decimal point, and we've yet to find a repeating sequence. Pi is a number that goes on forever without ever repeating. If someone asked you to invent such a number, you couldn't do it. Pi is as infinite and unique as the universe itself. Pi, the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And this is just the beginning. It keeps on going forever without ever repeating. The connection between mathematics and the physical world isn't just about dates on a calendar. To understand this ratio better, let's revisit where it comes from. Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. No matter which circle you measure, this ratio is always the same. It's a number very close to three, but it's not three. Even 4,000 years ago, people didn't consider pi to be exactly three. At the very least, they knew the first digit after the decimal point. If they didn't, the Egyptians wouldn't have been able to construct the pyramids. From Archimedes to today, mathematicians have calculated pi's digits after the decimal point. By hand, they managed to determine hundreds of digits accurately. In fact, in 1946, the record for manual calculation was set at 620 digits. For thousands of years, we relied on manual calculations and simple tools like wheels. But in the past 70 to 80 years, computers have completely transformed this process. Just last summer, a computer in Switzerland broke a record by calculating 62.8 trillion digits of pi in 108 days. That's a huge leap for us, but for an infinite number like pi, it's just a tiny step. Do we really need to calculate so many digits of pi? After all, even the people with the best memories have only managed to memorize up to 70,000 digits so far. For practical purposes, the answer is no. Those who memorize P's digits usually do so as a hobby or a mental exercise. Have you seen the movie Contact? It's based on Carl Sagan's novel of the same name. In one part of the novel, this line appears. The ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter pi. You know it well, of course. And you also know that pi has no end. There is no being in the universe, no matter how intelligent, that could calculate pi to its final digit. It's an infinite sequence of numbers. I spent 40 years searching for patterns in pi. I found nothing. There are those who seek their own kind of order within this infinity. We're trying to crack the combination of this tablet doodad, and the writing here says we'll find it if we figure out the secret at the heart of Pharaoh's tomb. Uh. 
<laughs> That's an easy one. The answer's in the question. And the pharaoh's tomb, i.e. the pyramids. Don't you get it, kid? You're looking for the secret number at the heart of the pyramids. Well, whistle me, Dixie, the answer's pi. Pi? 3.14159265 to be exact. Oh, three yes. Here's another fascinating aspect. Within the digits of pi, you can find every possible numerical sequence. Somewhere in P's infinite digits, the sequence you're looking for already exists. In fact, there's even a website called mypiday.com where you can enter your birth date, and it will tell you the exact position of that sequence within Pi. And it doesn't have to be your birth date. It could be your phone number, credit card number, or any string of digits. Somewhere within P's infinite digits, it will appear. Perhaps the mysteries of the universe are hidden within this incredible number. Which means that contained within this string of decimals is every single other number. Your birth date, combination to your locker, your social security number, it's all in there somewhere. Now, let's talk about how knowing just the first. 152 digits of pi is not only enough, but more than sufficient for solving almost any problem, even on a universal scale. How? Imagine a massive sphere. If you know the diameter of this sphere, you can calculate its circumference using pi. Now, let's take that sphere and give it a diameter of 93 billion light years, the approximate size of the observable universe. If we use the first 152 digits of pi to calculate the circumference of this sphere, would we get the exact result? No, not really. For one, we don't even know if the universe is a perfect sphere. However, the margin of error in this calculation would be smaller than the Planck length, which is the smallest theoretical distance in the universe. It's so small that no instrument could ever measure it. This means that knowing 152 digits has no practical use. To put it into perspective, using just the first 40 digits of pi, you could calculate the circumference of the observable universe with an error smaller than the width of a hydrogen atom. Even for the largest sphere you could imagine, based on the distance to the farthest human-made object, the Voyager spacecraft, you'd only need 15 digits of pi to perform accurate calculations. This is why NASA doesn't bother with trillions of digits of pi in its computations. Still, I've included a link in the description to a page with the first 100,000 digits of pi, just in case you ever need them. So, how many digits of pi should you memorize? Honestly, you don't need to memorize any. But if you'd like to impress your friends or practice memory techniques, memorizing the first 14 digits is enough. Here's a simple trick to help you memorize this sentence. How I want to drink, alcoholic of course, after the heavy lectures involving quantum mechanics. Each word's letter count corresponds to a digit of pi. By memorizing this sentence, you'll automatically know the first 14 digits of pi. Let me show you an interesting relationship between a needle and the number pi. You'll need a large sheet of paper for this experiment. Draw horizontal lines across the paper leaving spaces between them equal to the length of your needle. Once you've done that, place the paper on a flat surface and drop the needle onto it. Where did it land? On a line? Now drop it again. This time, it fell between the lines. If you keep repeating this process, sometimes the needle will land on a line, and other times, it will fall between the lines. Now, if you repeat this process 100 times, how many times do you think the needle will land on a line versus between the lines? You might expect a 50 to 50 split, right? Like flipping a coin? But with the needle, the probability is different. It's about 64 out of 100 times that the needle lands on a line. There's a specific ratio behind this randomness. And when you calculate it, you get two divided by pi. Even though there's no circle in sight, the probability of the needle landing on a line or between the lines brings us to pi. 
This was first discovered in the 18th century by a mathematician named Buffong. So it's called Buffong's needle problem. If we adjust the spacing between the lines to be exactly twice the length of the needle, the calculations directly reveal pi. In 1901, Mario Lazzarini conducted this experiment 3,408 times and was able to calculate the first six digits of pi. Today, with computers, we no longer need needles to approximate pi, but it's still a fascinating way to see how pi emerges from randomness. Using computers, we can write code to simulate dropping needles not just hundreds of times, but thousands of times. The more trials we run, the closer we get to pi. Let's go further. Instead of dropping needles, let's have the computer place random points inside a square. Even though the x and y coordinates of these points are random, a pattern begins to emerge. Can you see it? It's a quarter circle. The ratio of the points inside the quarter circle to the total number of points in the square equals pi divided by 4. Multiply this ratio by 4 and you get pi. This method is called the Monte Carlo simulation and is used in many areas of science. From modeling weather patterns to simulating stock markets, Monte Carlo simulations were first developed at the Los Alamos Laboratory during the creation of the atomic bomb. They were used to model a shield to protect against neutrons dispersed after the explosion. Today, these methods are widely applied across various fields, including cell simulations, stock market modeling, weather forecasting, and nuclear physics. P's significance isn't limited to circles. It's easy to see its role in circular objects around us. But the fact that we can also find it in something as random as the dropping of a needle is a reason to think more deeply about pi. It often shows up in places where you'd never expect it. For instance, consider the bends of a river. There are two key measurements for any river. The total length of the river, including all its curves and the straight line distance from its source to where it flows into the sea. The ratio of these two values often approximates pi. Over time, hundreds of formulas have been developed using pi to better understand the physical world. Every one of these formulas relies on pi in some way, but such a mysterious and important number cannot be fully appreciated by expecting everyone to understand these formulas. What anyone can do, however, is take at least one day a year just a few minutes to notice the things around them that are connected to pi. And March Fortin Pi Day is the perfect time to do so. Look around you on that day. Whether it's light, sound, or waves, pi is present in almost everything. It even determines the order of colors in a rainbow. It decides which note you hear when you press the C key on a piano. You can find it in the growth patterns of the cells that form the apple you eat, or in the brightness of a supernova explosion deep in the universe. Until we meet again, remember Pi is everywhere. Thank you for being here. Take care. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And remember, you are valuable.